Hi, everyone, and welcome into this week's Keys to the Crown, presented by Crown Royal. I'm Daniel Salerson, helping you set your fantasy lineup for week number five. And to help us out with that, we welcome in Adam Rank, fantasy expert, fantasy analyst for the NFL Network. Adam, I appreciate you stopping by. How are you? Oh, my gosh. The pleasure is all on this side of the computer screen. So I appreciate you having me on. <laughs> Absolutely. What we always do is we start off with the Saints game, which will be on Monday night as they welcome in the Los Angeles Chargers. Chargers um, had a big lead over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and, and end up losing to Tampa Bay. Big game on Monday night. Again, we don't know some of the options as far as the wide receivers are concerned for Michael Thomas and the New Orleans Saints. But for right now, give me someone to start, give me someone to sit, and maybe a sleeper pick for Monday Night Football. You know, that's what I was hoping. I hoping I was hoping you were going to tell me what was up with Michael Thomas because so many <laughs> so many spokes of the wheel come out from him. And I know the last couple of weeks we've had some pretty good success, at least in two of the three games with playing Traquan Smith. So he's an, obviously a, a great option if Michael Thomas is unable to go. Latavius Murray, I always like him too. You know, he's he's under the radar because Alvin Kamara is so good, but he's definitely a flex option for me. And of course, the obvious guys, Alvin Kamara, Drew Brees. We're starting them. There's no there's no secret right. there. I think what it really comes down to is how are we feeling about Justin Herbert? Because ever since he took over as the quarterback of the LA Chargers, he's been pretty good. And I think that if you're somebody who has Aaron Rodgers on a bye this week, I think you could start Herbert in this matchup. I, I really like him. I think Hunter Henry, has been a little bit of a disappointment this season. He's had double digit points in most of his games this year, but it's kind of like when you order sashimi, you're like, ah, oh, is this it? Like I paid a lot for this. This is all that I'm <laughs> getting. But I do like the matchup this week because the Saints have allowed the eighth most, or excuse me, they've allowed a top eight tight end in every game this season. So no disrespect, like I think you guys are great, but don't get mad at me for putting that out there. But I do think that he, he's a pretty good option. So it's always fun to play Monday night guys. So I'm looking forward to this one for sure. Absolutely. Should be a good one inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome on Monday night. And speaking of the Los Angeles Chargers, they'll be without Austin Eckler. So I know fans that have him in their leagues are, are trying to find a replacement. So on the offensive side on the waiver wire, who's out there that maybe fans can pick up? Well, I it really, if Joshua Kelly is available, he was the guy that they turned to for most of the season. So if he's available on your waiver wire, that's somebody that I would pick up. I also wouldn't sleep on Justin Jackson. He's played well in spurts when given the opportunity. He was usurped, obviously, the season by the rookie who had the little bit of the, a scramble with the with the exchange there in the, at the end of the first half. But Justin Jackson, I, I wouldn't be I, I wouldn't be too upset if that was the player that I ended up with. I certainly wouldn't be spending too much fab money if your league is set up that way on Joshua Kelly, knowing that I could probably go in and get Justin Jackson for like a dollar or two or something like that at a really cheap cost. So I'm looking at either one of those those Chargers running backs. I think that some other good guys that we could see this week. Brandon Ayuk kind of stood out to me on Sunday Night Football. Obviously a great talent. Saw him at Arizona State an awful lot. I'm out on the West Coast. So I enjoyed watching him. I think that he could be somebody who could end up being a little bit of a game breaker for the 49ers. I know they got Debo Samuel there as well. So it'll be interesting to see. And another one, I want to make sure, Ernest Johnson is going to be one that I'm looking at that might be a little bit under the radar this week. Now, obviously, Nick Chubb is on the IR, which elevated Kareem Hunt to the starting role. But the Ernest could be the player who ends up getting that Kareem Hunt role in the future. I know they've got a couple of cup games coming up. They've got the Colts, follow that up with the Steelers. So it might not pay immediate dividends. So people might not be looking for him on the waiver wire. So I would I would actually try to go to add him as well and just stash him on the bat, on the bench, especially if you have Nick Chubb. Before we wrap things up here, uh, let's talk about tonight's game, Thursday Night Football. I know Saints fans will be watching this one just because it's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as they take on the Chicago Bears, just like we did with Monday Night Football with Saints and Chargers. Give me someone to start, give me someone to sit, and, and maybe a sleeper pick. Well, you're going to be looking at all the obvious guys. I don't think that I would have any fear starting Tom Brady this week, although the Bears have been really good against opposing quarterbacks. I still believe that Brady's going to be out there throwing the football an awful lot. He might not get five touchdowns for you this week. And, of course, if you're starting Brady, that means you're going to be starting Mike Evans as well. On the other side, though, I'm sitting Nick Foles. I'm starting Allen Robinson. I have David Montgomery a little bit lower on my list. I'm not sure that I can start him yet. It's weird because you hear Matt Nagy talking, and he, he comes out and he says, we need to run the ball more. 
And you're like, bro, you're the one calling the plays. Like you're the guy who's like, <laughs> I need to start eating better. And then you're ordering chili cheese fries. Like you got it. You, you're the one who has to make the decision and do all that stuff. So those, and I also am interested about Scotty Miller this week. I have him as a sleeper. And I really do believe that, you know, he's being targeted a lot. He's had at least 79 receiving yards in three of his four games. You saw Brady really stretching the field against the Chargers with him. So that could be an opportunity to open some things up. So he's kind of my sleeper pick. And a player I'm avoiding is Rob Gronkowski. And I know a lot of people have been asking me about this all week because O.J. Howard, of course, is on injured reserve. But we really haven't seen anything out of Rob Gronkowski that leads us to believe he's ready to go. Now, Gronkowski was in wrestling, you know, just recently. And it's it reminds yes. me when Raw has like those reunion shows and you're like, oh my gosh, it's it's Scott Hall. And but when when they go to the top rope, you're like, bro, like, no, 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 you're not, you're not that person anymore. Get down. <laughs> just come in, wave, say hello. I think Rob and Gronk is one of my favorite players of all time in the NFL. I think that. His role as a blocker, which I know he was joking about a couple of weeks ago, he's doing really well at that. And for whatever reason, it's not like he hasn't played with Tom Brady his entire career, somehow hasn't made that connection yet. So until I see it, I'm not going to be starting Rob Gronkowski. Well, between the Chili Dogs and Monday Night Raw, he just described my childhood year. So I appreciate you (laughs) going back down memory lane for me. Uh, Good stuff there. That's Adam Rank, a fantasy analyst for the NFL Network. And those are your keys to the crown presented by Crown Royal. Thanks, Adam. 